Hello everyone and welcome to No I'm stop arguing like that. I'm I'm trying to do an intro! No I like No I have fun bad with this no, no I'm going to read this oh, shit. Hello, it's me again. You're probably wondering where I've been. Well, funny you asked. I I've I've been uh What would you do if there was a child right in front of you? Colors weave into a Today we ask the age-old question. What the one in the what, what is a 2.5D? Okay, so remember when I said I think the game now comes very close to the kind of vibe and feel I wanted to have. Or when I said And honestly, this makes the game look exactly the way I want it to look. Or that one time I also said Number 4. Crystal the Fox from the Star Fox series. She's fast, has blue fur, shows that she's able to lift vases with ease, and even rides a pterodactyl. <laughs> She easily checks out everything on my list. Well, I was lying the entire time, I'm sorry. The game looks fine, in my opinion, but I am an artist. Okay, I, I, fine is not fine. Fine is bad. The game could really use half an extra dimension. Let me explain. We, as humans, can see three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. It's why my main man can move to the left, right, up, down, back, and towards the screen. And quite a few games make use of these three dimensions. Yet, there are also many games that only use two of those dimensions, X and Y, completely eliminating that third dimension. Encaved is one of those games. It's a 2D game. It's faking some 3D looking effects, yeah, like this turning animation, which oh my god, isn't that just beautiful? I know you think the same thing, and you know what? Just for you, I'll play it in slow motion. Okay, maybe not. Or like the stalagmites in the back receiving less light and moving slower than the ones in front. That's really just a, a simple trick done through code, it's not actual 3D. So Encaved is a 2D game, but I kind of want to combine it with 3D. If you do that, you'll get a oh, wow, 5D? Yeah, this might not be the direction I want to take with this game. No, 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 if, if you take half of the 2D and half of the 3D, you get... 23? 2.5D. Now, physically speaking, this term makes zero sense. You can't only have 0.5, half of a dimension. That, that just makes no sense, it's not a thing. Instead, it's really only a term used in video games. I think it's where you combine the movement options of two dimensions while taking advantage of the third dimension visually. A good example would be Donkey Kong Country Returns for instance. You can only move left, right, up and down, only taking use of those two dimensions. However, this champ right here is, is definitely closer to the camera than Donkey Kong. Plus, all of the objects and creatures are represented visually as 3D models. 3D. So really, 2.5D is just combining the visuals of 3D with the functionality of 2D. The player's actions are limited to two dimensions while the world around them is 3D. Now that that's out of the way, let's convert into 2.5D. Okay, so I made this 3D scene here. There's finally actual shadow in the game now. I added my boy and oh, oh, that doesn't. That works. We now also get to see the awesome visual benefits of 3D lighting and the shadows they create in 5 FPS for some reason. I don't know what went wrong here. Now you know it would really, really show how great the lighting can be and could possibly even single-handedly explain why I'm giving the game this makeover. A bumpy ground. I'll show you. So here's what I did. I quickly drew some ground texture, which it looks horrible, okay? It, it looks horrible. But if I throw it in Blender, lower all the darker colors and let the light pebbles and rocks stick out, it looks horrible, okay? It, but now it's 3D, okay? It's not getting much better than this, okay? This art style is called voxel art. It's the art style that your Minecraft sculptures have. And in my honest, very personal opinion, Voxel art, most of the time, is pretty disgusting. I'm very sorry. Obviously, there are many, many exceptions. I think a lot of voxel art with great lighting and good post-processing can look really good. But at this point, can you even tell this is voxel art? That's like saying... Honestly, I'm not a great fan of pixel art, but recently, it's really started to grow on me. For this pixel art game, it actually makes some sense to work with this art style for 3D models since, well, voxel literally means volumetric pixel, it's a 3D pixel, it's a cube instead of a square. 
and thanks to the lighting and the combination with that pixel art yes this looks awesome and this is all just because of the height difference in the ground tiles there's no multiple colors applied to the ground or anything yet for that to happen for me to actually apply a texture to the model I'm going to have to do some UV mapping. Today we asked the age old question. How the what the ah! Yeah. Three weeks have passed. I don't know what I'm doing. This sucks. I'll retry this later in the video. For now, this also looks completely fine. You know what doesn't look completely fine though? Remember when this happened? So why did Gas Mask Guy drop through the ground as soon as it became 3D? He worked perfectly fine before. Well, you see, Unity uses completely different physics engines for 2D and 3D. They can't interact with one another. In fact, there's much more that goes wrong when trying to combine 2D and 3D. See this light? See how bright it is? Well, this sprite doesn't. It just ignores the light completely because the light is 3D. I dye my hair crazy colors. I'm a 2D object, so I must ignore 3D objects. So what I try to do to fix this is turn Gas Mask Guy into a 3D object, giving him a 3D collider and a 3D rigid body. Everything's broken now. Like I said, they use completely different engines, so my code that works with the functionality of the 2D physics system has no idea what to do with this new 3D stuff. I used to modify the gravity and set it to zero whenever the player would hang on a latch for instance. That needed a new workaround, that just wasn't a thing in 3D physics. Also the grappling hook for instance uses a 2D distance joint to work. There is no 3D distance joint, are you starting to understand the problem we're having? Pretty much means I'd have to completely redo the grappling hook yet again and I can't, I can't have another devlog to be mm -hmm. about the- What? The- uh, And the worst thing of all is that- I had to make a custom collider in Blender to get the capsule working since you can not only scale the z-axis of a capsule collider, that skill, it scales the entire thing if you well, just... How does that make you feel? Well, well I, I, I guess I, it, it makes me angry. I, I've been struggling with it for so long, nothing makes sense. Is it that hard to just make a physics system work in both 2D and 3D? What's Unity doing? I might just switch to Unreal, okay? Yeah, okay, I said it. So, why are you changing everything about Gas Mask Guy to work with the 3D world when you could make the world work with 2D Gas Mask Guy? You weirdo. The Wait. Boom. So now both 2D and 3D objects can interact with each other, as well as just 3D and 3D objects still interacting with each other. It also took a little bit to figure this out, but yo, the sprites react to the 3D light now as well. This is going to look so cool. I've been thinking for a while now that car racks would make for a pretty cool campsite. Like there would just be a group of three survivors or something using their wrecked car to sleep in using the tires as seats and just finding creative ways to use the different parts from their destroyed car to their advantage. Now, what if I make this more extreme? A whole clan, tribe, faction, whatever that used car racks to build their little underground village. So for that, I first had to draw a car. Now with the perspective being weird and all, this took a while to get right, but I'm very happy with the final result. It's not much of a car rack. It's, it's more like just a car. So I made some variations of it. Now I made a bunch of small decorations and well, it all leads up to this. Yes. Now the game doesn't have any actual audio yet, I just added them in post to give the reveal a bigger wow factor. In case you're wondering, yes, that did make the timeline for that footage look like this. But it's really not that bad compared to the rest. <laughs> and that, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> the dust took a while to make since it's 3D now. So I can't be using that cringe 2D smoke. Yuck! Ew! <laughs> You're gross! You might think, oh wow, that's awesome how Unity just allows you to easily make lighting, dust, everything work together so well. No. There's actually about... 12 gazillion tricks and workarounds I had to go through to get this look right. I am so happy with how this looks. The different cars and their lights are kind of scary and pretty ominous. But if you find yourself in a neat spot, it also feels pretty cozy. And that's exactly where I'm having trouble right now. Depending on how I approach this location, it could work really well as a location to explore in-game. 
that's also how I originally intended it to be. This would be a little village that got completely wiped out by either mutated beasts or by another faction. You would walk around this ominous place either to find a lone survivor that can sell you interesting gear or give you side quests to complete. Or it could make for a pretty cool boss arena. That, that's all I'm saying. Now, like I said, when approached from a different standpoint, it could be pretty cozy and would actually make for a cool new hub for the player and their squad. I love game hubs, okay? When done right, they can feel so cozy, beautiful, and they always give you such a nice break from the action. Whenever I played Sekiro in between sneaking past a giant <laughs> snake... <laughs> He's coming up for an interview and you, you never guess his name, it's Dick Cock. <laughs> killing a giant gorilla... Oh, dude, fucking suck, holy shit. Bruh, I'm, I'm focusing. So, like, uh, no head or what? No head, bro. Twice, three times, and his wife. What the fuck, was that his brother? Oh, it's his wife, I just said it's his wife. Whoa, whoa. No, I need a break. I love walking around the beautiful temple, which acts as the hub, taking in the view and being completely zen for a moment between all of that action. In Dishonored, whenever I'm not assassinating my enemies from the dark, sneaking around, constantly looking behind me to check if anyone's onto me, I love just chilling in the hub, drink with the boys, enjoy the view, talk with awesome and interesting characters. I don't mind just taking it all in for a bit longer than I have to. Sorry, I'm actually going to like play the game now, or uh? Uh, well, I mean, I'm I'm not just playing the game. I'm I'm experiencing it. Oh. Even in Dying Light, which I play co-op, me and the boys used to take a break from the hordes of zombies every now and then so we can vibe in the different safe zones and rate them and in terms of how much would we want to use them in a real-life zombie apocalypse. Oh yo man, I found it. This is the one. This what, really you found is the it? one. Yeah, I really did. Yeah, Come I'm over, coming have over, a look. I'm coming over. Okay, I'm here. Ah, yeah, I like it. Um, oh! Hubs can be such a great way to take a small break from the intense constant action while still playing the game. You're not taking yourself out of the experience. And the way I see it, this car area would fulfill that purpose really well. Though it could also be super ominous when I want it to be. Let me know what you think in the comments. How would you like to see this interesting area used in the game? You can actually wishlist the game on Steam already. It helps out a ton, so if you'd like to help out in some way, I would really appreciate it a lot. As well as leaving a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Join the Discord server to chill with me and all the chats there. And I'll see you in the next devlog where I'll throw in some more enemies to fight and... Maybe I'll even, uh, I don't know, do a backflip or something. All right, see you later, champ. Uh, Tice, we need to have a talk. It's been a while now since I've talked to you, beard to man. I, I love Encaved. It, it's, it's one of the best games there is of any indie developer out there at the moment. And your videos, the way you make them, is just, they're wonderful. They fill me with such joy, I'm entertained in every single one. Gentle humor against the darkness of Encaved is just wonderful. And I've got one problem with it. It's all the pixels. How about, it's a great idea for you, great idea, you can keep this one, you don't have to credit me for this, how about just make it 3D? What a brilliant idea. Look, I'll, I'll give you a couple of weeks to sort that out and then come back to me with a 3D one. It's going to rock, it's going to be brilliant.